Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I thought today we would do a video talking about the different classes of vehicles in ground vehicles and what I generally look for and what I generally approach when it comes to different tech trees, how I research them and uh, also what do the different classes of vehicle mean when it comes to the game. Now understand this is very much a generalized video, uh, this is actually based on some of the comments that I got on yesterday's video and not every vehicle in the game is going to conform to these standards. If we wanted to do a more specialized video on uh, different uh, nations, then I'll probably have to do that in the future. But this one is much more of a kind of uh, look at, you know, what to expect when it comes to different vehicles and how you should kind of set up your lineups uh, when it comes to them itself. Uh, obviously, you want a decent balance of things, and there are definitely stronger classes compared to others. So when it comes to the research itself, generally what I like doing, and I think is the best way to do it, is to research by BR. So as you go up a tech tree, you want to find the vehicle which is closest BR to the one that you're playing, and then try and research that. Uh, so let's say you're using 6.3 vehicles, and in front of you you have a bunch of 7.0s, uh, you have a bunch of 7.3s, and you have maybe a few of the 6.7s. Well, what I would do, uh, even if the strength of the 6.7s is lower, I would research the 6.7s first um, to be able to play them with the pre-existing lineup that you have, and then uh, go on to the 7.0s. So the idea is, is that you continue going up the tech tree at a steady pace. Uh, this will be a little bit harder to do um, because, you know, there'll be certain vehicles that you run into which are definitely weaker than others and have different play styles compared to others and will be harder to spade out. But also at the same time, it will give you more experiences in the game and it will teach you how to use those vehicles. And therefore, uh, when you come to those vehicles which are seen as meta, you will have a much better time with them. Generally nowadays, uh, when it comes to War Thunder, most of the, I suppose we class them as meta vehicles that are in the game, I find super easy to use, uh, mainly because I've been through the fire and flames uh, when it comes to spading stuff like the Type 60 AM, uh, there's a clam recently, and also even stuff like the tow carriers. Uh, it's just one of those things that you've got to kind of get through, you know, like a rite of passage in a way, and it just makes everything else easier when you compare them. Uh, to each other. So that's how I generally do it. Normally you want to research around the ideas of power lineups. So if you see, uh, if you look at a tech tree and you see it has a really strong 4.7 or a 4.3 like the Soviets do, or something such as the 6.7 like the Americans do, or with the British, the 7.3, you want to try and research that power lineup and use it together to be able to spade it out and research the next step while, you know, you have your auto repair turned off and all of that. So instead of looking at um, what lines to go down when it comes to researching, what should be looked at is uh, trying to research uh, vehicles which are at a similar or the same BR bracket that you're in so you can keep balanced lineups and therefore it's easier for you to play the game and therefore get into the next stage. That's how I've always maintained success in War Thunder and I think it's the best way to do it. So when it comes to the classes of vehicles, the first we'll start with is easily the weakest, and this is tank destroyers. Tank destroyers are the weakest class in the game because they have no special bonuses to them. They are some of the cheapest to bring in by SB, but they don't have a lot of the other factors that the other classes do. They don't have access to uh, scouting. They don't have access to artillery for some reason. Uh, they don't have access to a lot of different things, which basically means that they are incredibly weak. Most of them are casemates as well, meaning that they don't have turrets, and because they don't have turrets, this limits the usability of many of the vehicles, meaning that they have to rely on their armor, which many of them can't uh, when it comes to the general game because of their BR placement. Normally, the only advantage you get with a tank destroyer is you will be getting a gun, which is uh, slightly lower be are than its medium tank counterpart, but uh, that is not enough 
to be able to make them more viable. The only tank destroyers that I really run are the turreted ones, uh, so stuff such as the M36, like the Slugger or the Jackson, depending on who you're chatting to, and also uh, other machines like the Conway or the FV4005 for a bit of fun. Tank destroyers are there to be interesting and unique with their big donk guns, but most of them just feel bad because they have long reloads and very limited usability because of their lack of turrets. So uh, tank destroyers is definitely the weakest class in the game, and uh, until they add some kind of unique mechanic to them, uh, they will not get any better. Light tanks are my favourite class in the game, because no matter what BR range you're at, like let's say you're in a 5.7 light tank and you get into a 6.7 game, you are still usable. You know, you don't have to fully rely on your gun to be useful in the vehicle. They're also one of the ones which is much more reliant on crew skills uh, compared to other vehicles, just because of how the scouting works being tied to keen vision, uh, which most of the other skills are not specifically tied to things or are universal skills, so such as the tank driving, weapon reloading, leadership stuff, which you should get for all of your vehicles. But light tanks in general give you mobility most of the time. They give you access to scouting, which is a wonderful mechanic, definitely one of the best in the game. And also they get access to artillery and are generally um, not too bad on the SP cost either, uh, even if they uh, even if they changed it a little bit ago. They also have access to the airstrike modification, which means that you can get into cast quicker if you dominate uh, the battlefield from the air. And generally a lot of BRs, especially mid-tier ones, are dominated by aircraft and their ability to be able to get into it, which is why it's very important to research aircraft alongside your ground vehicles as you are moving up. But light tanks have pretty much everything. The only thing that they struggle with is sometimes a lack of firepower and also sometimes lack of being able to uh, get around the flanks and do some damage, like lack of armor as well on uh, being survivable. But because, uh, it, well, if you use your binos and stuff like that, you can have a great, um, you can have a great performance with a light tank and still do uh, fantastically well. So overall, it's uh, my favorite class. It's probably the best class in the game. And when you think about the broken vehicles which have been added the last few updates, the vast majority of them have been light tanks. Medium tanks and MBTs are kind of like your staple when it comes to the game, and they're also probably one of the more powerful classes because of this fact. This uh, includes, you know, most stuff like Abrams that you've seen, Leopards, uh, stuff such as uh, things like uh, Panzer IVs and even uh, Shermans, uh, you know, Cromwell's uh, medium tanks as well. Most lineups will be made up of these vehicles, and generally they have kind of a jack of all trades setup. They normally have the firepower to be able to fit the BR. They normally have decent mobility, and also they normally have turrets, which is really nice. The mechanics that they get access to are limited, but you still get access to artillery, which is really useful um, to try and dig people out of uh, positions or mark people as well uh, for your general teams. Uh, but normally you get access to, you know, meta stuff, such as uh, good guns, good ammunition, decent armor, and overall decent mobility. They're vehicles which are definitely jack of all trades and they work fantastically well. Most lineups in the game, which are seen as really good, uh, their staple is the medium tanks. Uh, so uh, for the 7.3 British that we talked about, the Carnarvon is a really good heavy tank, but you've got the Centurion as well. You've got the FV, um, which is there as well. And also, at the same time, when you have a look at the 7.3 German lineup, yeah, you've got the crazy light tanks, but you've also got the Leopard as the staple there. Um, then you've got the Shermans all the way up the American tech tree. Uh, even for stuff like the Swedish, you have the SDRV 122s at top tier. Now, the power of medium tanks has definitely gone down recently, but that's more of just because of a ton of additions of really good light tanks uh, to be able to battle them. They're still very, very strong and easily the best class uh, when it comes to the game. Most of your lineups should compromise of these vehicles and then extra elements around them. So such as two medium tanks and then a light tank that you bring along or, uh, you know, maybe a heavy tank and then two medium tanks. That generally works pretty well when it comes to the game. 
Heavy tanks are one of those sets of vehicles which are probably the most unbalanced in the game. And I don't mean unbalanced in like a good or a bad way, just generally unbalanced. If you get a, uh, if you get a uh, BR range in your match, which is generally higher than what you have, your heavy tank will be a lot less useful than if you get a lower BR range. If you get a full down tier in a heavy tank, it can be absolutely brutal for the enemy team because heavy tanks rely basically on their armor. And they've actually taken a few nerfs recently, like with the score system, where you get less now when you get shot, uh, so you get a lot less score with it. Uh, but generally, heavy tanks work uh, incredibly well in the game in a down tier, but at their tier, sometimes they tend to struggle, and when they are up-tiered, they definitely struggle. So heavy tanks are definitely on the lower echelon of the classes. They're definitely not as bad as the tank destroyers that are in the game. But generally, they do have a few issues uh, when it comes to them and how uh, you generally use them. I would say that they're still very good vehicles, uh, but it's more vehicle dependent. It's not like an overall thing where most of the time life ta light tanks are really good. Most of the time medium tanks are really good. Heavy tanks, it's much more situational with these specific heavy tanks. Like the 6.7 American heavies are very good. The 6.7 uh, Tiger heavy or the Tiger for the Germans is very good. The KV-1 Zis-5 is a very powerful vehicle at certain BR brackets. Um, but there are a lot of vehicles in the game which are heavy tanks, which depending on the meta of the time and what BRs are looked at as meta and what are generally played around um, are seen as good or are seen as bad. So it, they're much more fluctuating uh, compared to many other vehicles, which is why light tanks and medium tanks move around way more in BR range than heavy tanks do. They also do have the crown, though, of the only vehicle which was taken out of the game due to balance issues, the mouse. Then you have SBAAs and SBAAGs. Uh, these vehicles are obviously designed to be able to take out aircraft and helicopter, well, airplanes and helicopters, but also uh, some of them are very deadly tank destroyers as well, uh, depending on the BR bracket that you're at. Uh, these are kind of a necessity in a lineup, uh, even though um, I'm sure many people don't like bringing them. Uh, some of them uh, can be absolutely terrible. Um, they can be really, really bad, but many of them are completely fine, and uh, they work very well in whatever BR bracket they're in. Generally, what you want to see uh, from an SBAA is high fire rate, high muzzle velocity, and also good turret traverse and gun elevation. If those factors exist, then your SBAA will probably do very well. If those factors don't exist, then it might have a bit of an issue being more combat effective. But these are things that you want to put in your lineup, especially if you don't have a light tank, and especially if you don't have plane options uh, along with you, because it means that you can deal with the air threat when many others aren't able to. It also is normally lower to spawn in SP-wise, uh, so if you're near the end of a battle and you need that extra uh, last little push to be able to win the battle, or you need to support your team, they can be nice to bring in uh, because of their slightly cheaper cost. But overall, they're decent vehicles, they work really well, um, it's just they're very specialized in their role, most of them, and they're kind of stuck there. Some of them, as I said, can be multi-role, like a lot of the ATO radar SBAAs are not just good AAs, they can also be very Cl uh, clutch tank destroyers in certain scenarios, but many of them aren't. Many of them are just generally good at killing aircraft, and uh, that is completely fine, you know, because that's all you really need. That's pretty much all of the classes which are in War Thunder when it comes to ground. Uh, if you want, I suppose, a tier list, uh, number one would be light tanks, number two would be mediums, number three would be SPAAs, number four heavies, and number five would, of course, be tank destroyers, and that is a very low five, may I just say. But as always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Merciless Reaper, Jerry Provolt, Mega Dino King, Professor X1718, Orange Tail, Sakoshi Tiger, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe, Eugene's Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, Moxie, B. Young, and Derek R. Barine, Lafouche, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.